when it comes to talking to people who are not yet Christians or not yet believing and have not yet realized what Jesus has done for them, I would start at a different place in that I would probably start in a what you think you know about Jesus and God is probably not what is the truth. Therefore, I would probably challenge some of the preconceptions that they think that they know in the religious upbringing that they've probably had in some ways. So I would look to say, well, you may have thought that you needed to do this or this or this, but actually God's done it all. You just have to receive it. You know, and I would use illustrations like, OK, when you when someone buys a gift for you, they wrap it nicely, present it well, put your name on it and then they hand it to you. You didn't buy it. You didn't deserve it. It was a gift and they gave it to you, but it wasn't yours until you received it, even though you had your name on it. Until you reached out and took it and opened it and then received it as this is the gift. This is now mine. You haven't received anything, even though the gift is there. And that's essentially what God has done. Jesus has reconciled everybody. He's taken away the sin or the, the lost identity, their amnesia from who they really are. He's revealed the father as the express image of the father. He's shown people that it's all about love. He's called people to love one another, forgive one another. I would sort of challenge them to see, look at what Jesus said in light of, well, this is what we think in our religious things, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth and vengeance and God being angry and needing appeasing and all that to say it's already been done. You know, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. He's already made a relationship. He's already given you the spirit and made you alive so you can know him. He's already done all these amazing things. Why don't you just let him experience, give you that experience? So give them the opportunity of having the experience as well. Probably having knocked some of the religious ideas that they probably think about in that they probably think, oh, you've got to do this. You've got to go to church. You've got to do this. You've got to pray. You've got to read a Bible. You've got to do this. You've got to do this. And they say, well, who said? Who said you've got to do any of those things? And sort of almost like open up a whole different vista to who God really is. I mean, it's like uh, the book written by Philip Yancey, The Jesus I Never Knew. You know, he was brought up I probably in the Bible Belt or whatever uh, and never really knew Jesus for who he really was. And I think I would sort of try and present Jesus as you may have thought you knew about him, but there's more. And there's truth that probably challenges some of what you thought you knew. You know, and stress the need for experience and the need to in, it's a relationship god will us god is in them already wanting to reveal himself to them ask them to give him a chance then you can use something like behold i stand at the door in the knock and you can say god is in you within your spirit he wants to he wants you to let him into the rest of your life to bless you to heal you to make you whole to remove all guilt, shame, condemnation in your life, to give you uh, your true identity as his son and bless you, empower you to succeed and prosper. And then, you know, get them to close their eyes, picture a door, open the door, see what happens. You know, say so ultimately it all comes down to the same point, allowing them to experience things. But you may need to, in both groups, remove some preconceived ideas about what they think. It's about um, what they think might be the truth and then help them to find the truth as a person. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.